Applied manufacturing at NOCWD has taken on a lot of different faces over the last few decades. It's a huge technology that's going to affect manufacturing in the future. E even today you can see how it is. We've been the central hub for manufacturing at China Lake since the late 40s. It will play a huge part in every manufacturing environment, be it DOD or just in industry uh, manufacturing. These technologies are the future and we are investing into the equipment, we're investing into the people, we're investing into the processes. We're a great resource for the whole center, for Navair as a whole, for manufacturing. Customer can come in, they can have direct requirements, a direct drawing package and know exactly what they want or they can come in with a concept that they really don't know exactly what they want and they need help getting to an end product. Applied manufacturing includes uh, several robotic systems such as surface mount technology for circuit boards, uh, robotic machining as well as assembly. We also have additive manufacturing and 3D printing, vacuum casting and injection molding. So injection molding is a process uh, most people know very very little about, but you see it in everyday life. Uh, pretty much anything plastic is injection molded. Here at the weapons division, we have two different injection molding machines. We have a very small manual press and we use that for prototyping. We also have a, a 90 ton, very large uh, boy injection molding press that we've used for um, tail fins that they currently use on the Spike missile. We can adapt some of these new technologies. We can print out the tooling. We can save money and save time by doing things like that. It was about five years ago we first purchased our industrial robot, which to my knowledge was the first one uh, that the Navy actually owned. Presently, we are working on some assemblies for helicopter handles, and it would take, I believe, about 35 minutes to manufacture one of these components that actually went into the helicopter handle. We were able to utilize a robotic machining cell and got them done in less than 17 minutes. The real key component to that was freeing up our skilled workforce. We added a new robotic assembly cell uh, utilizing three robots that work together. It has proven that it's a viable resource for a very low production environment. For vacuum castings, we have to print out a master part to make a silicone mold so we can vacuum cast those parts. It will allow us to cast parts that are, say, very thin-walled, very unique geometry, and we'll be able to get very consistent properties because it doesn't have any air bubbles. It allows us to do a lot of the higher-end, more difficult casting jobs using these polymer materials. We continue to grow in our 3D printing area. Being able to take a CAD model, draw it up, and to hit print and actually build something, just as you'd, you'd print a document, but you're printing parts, is just completely mind-blowing. These processes are proving that they do work. I believe it's FY17, we're looking for a metal printing machine to be in our inventory trying to be at the forefront of that of manufacturing and coming up with collaborating with um, DOD and industry and, and coming up with what is the future of AM? Where are we going to take this? Where does it make sense and where doesn't it make sense? Let us provide quality service, quality products for you. Utilize what's available, what we have to offer. Come in and, and give us your ideas. Let us do the work for you.